Hi everyone, Chris Cox here, Race Director, Christchurch Airport Marathon 2013. Good to have you along and um, obviously you're thinking about the event for this year. You've been, uh, there's been a lot of preparation and I suppose my role is just to quickly cover with you what you need to be thinking about when you arrive. Remember the start time is 8.30, so quite an early start compared to other years, so you probably need to be looking at getting there at about 7.30. There's going to be huge amounts of congestion potentially getting parked. So we have lots of good car parking at the start finish area. So I think you need to be looking at arriving and ready and looking for a car park at about 7.30. You don't need to worry too much about your gear. It might be a long walk back to your car. So if it is a long walk back to your car to drop off your warm-up gear and you're worried about missing the fin about miss about missing the start, uh, we do have a very good gear tent which is staffed by the uh, ATC, the Aircorp, Aircorp Cadets. Um, with drink, with uh, nutrition etc, um, you need to be thinking about drinking the night before, which I'm sure you've been advised, but there are drink stations on the course, every 5 k's is drink stations. There have been some changes to last year's course, uh, there's no loop uh, south of the, of the start line as we had last year. This year you start north, running along Orchard Road, along a road we've formed behind Raywood Fresh and onto McLean's Island Road. Now McLean's Island Road this year is totally closed, so it's an out and back circuit for the, for the half marathon people. And that will take you around to Conservators Road, as we did last year, but right to the end of Conservators Road to make up for the distance we've lost with not having that loop at the start. Marathon people, of course, uh, they carry on round behind the airport and the, 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 um, the return loop is, it has been adjusted as well for those people. Numbers, uh, numbers in the event this year are very good. We are looking at uh, tracking ahead of last year, so we're confidently expecting the way numbers are tracking. As I speak, we have over 4,000. Uh, we may be nearly getting 5,000 in the event, and of course the big event, as always, is the half marathon. Uh, so numbers are tracking very well, which means there's going to be a huge number of people on the start line. So it's important when you get there, you sort out where you're going to start, Find your time zone, which will be well marked with, with banners. And of course, you're looking for your, for your pace runners as well. And uh, Richard will be telling you who those pace runners are, what times they're aiming, and, and look for him and his crew at Race Pack Pickup in the, at the event village when you come to pick up your race packs on Saturday. Hi guys, Richard Greer here from Complete Performance. We're going to help you at this weekend's Christchurch Half Marathon. If you've got a goal time, uh, we're going to get you across that line at that time that you're after. We've got uh, Mark who's running 1 hour 30 as a pace runner. I'm going to be running 1 hour 40. We've got Leighton Greer, my brother, running 1 hour 50. Fleur Palsy is running 2 hours and Pip Wilson's going to run 2 hours 10. Look out for our balloons on the start line, line up around us uh, and then join us on the run. We'll set a nice consistent pace and get you across the line in that goal time that you want to. Actually, um, it should be some sort of carbohydrate base, that's not a time to cut out your carbohydrates, but you also need good quality protein because you're wanting to um, sustain fullness and satiety in that too. So as long as it's got, it doesn't have to be a big piece to feed, it can be uh, rice, it can be bre a, a bread based, it can be potatoes, kumara, that type of thing. And it might be that's the sort of you don't, you have a smaller amount of vegetables and have more things like pumpkin and peas and corn which are going to have a higher concentration of carbohydrate and then probably I'd have another um, light snack before you go to bed so it might be a smoothie or a bowl of cereal or a toaster sandwich or something like that but probably try to keep the fat down because that'll fill you up too much and then you won't be able to eat enough carbohydrate. I think you just drink your normal fluids. Um, if you're eating a little bit more carbohydrate you'll need some more fluid but again that's where you can have um, a milk drink or a juice as yep. an option as well so getting in some carbohydrate while you're actually drinking. So is that? Birch's muesli, a porridge, um, Good quality toast, like Vogels or Bergen type breads. Yep. Um, if you can do baked beans on toast, but again, it depends if you're not used to doing that. Eggs on toast. Um, a smoothie, if you find you're a bit nervous and you can't actually tolerate solid food, then perhaps you better to have something like quite. Yep. Cool. I mean, some people, it depends what you can tolerate. Like if it's a small banana or it might be some dry toast or something with honey. You know, like it just depends on the appetite and what. Some people can tolerate having something right up to the race and others can't at all, yep. and it can affect them. So it's just, it's again something they should, you should practice. Yep. And your training runs is how close you can eat to your race. Um, don't overhydrate because um, you know sometimes you think you're running this big race and you need to eat, drink lots and lots of water. The key thing is just drink to thirst 
it's probably the key thing and um, make sure that it probably be a good idea on the day before when you're drinking some fluids that they actually contain some carbohydrates and protein so a juice or a milky type drinks as opposed to too much water so then you're effectively your carbohydrate loading. Running a race like this is that you don't try anything new it's all about yep. consolidating what you've been practicing. Okay, so it's coming up to race day and you want to get there as fit and feeling fresh and ready to go as possible. And you also want to make sure you have a really good race plan for on the day. That should be relatively detailed and it should cover your goals. How are you going to pace yourself, your nutrition and any keywords that you want to use to keep yourself going. So regarding the pacing, you want to make sure that you're not going to start off too quickly. It's good to have some contingency plans for race day for things that might go wrong. So, it could start to rain. What are you gonna do if it's, if it's raining? Have you got the right sort of clothing to deal with the conditions? Or, or the other side, it could be really hot. Have you, are you gonna take on more fluid if it's hot? So, so that you can get through the race more comfortably. Um, what happens if you get really tired? Have you got an emergency gel? So you can just have a real pickup on that last few Ks. Um, anything that you think of that could possibly go wrong, try and dream up of how to deal with it and you'll cope with it much better on the day. So when, when you're in the race you want to try and maintain some focus and concentration so that you, you're getting the best out of yourself. Um, this can be um, checking your own technique, um, you could be thinking about breathing, um, what you're doing with your arms. Um, another technique that some people use is to focus on what's around them so that they might think, oh wow, this is absolutely stunning scenery and, and that kind of keeps them motivated and keeps them moving even when they're getting tired. Um, might be focusing on, on some, somebody that's ahead of them um, and trying to catch up with them as quickly as possible. So uh, just a few ways to try and um, get the most out of yourself when you're racing.